Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors. I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Unexpected in the shadows. I like to put. Actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know. You ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Wasn't that a great shot of the monkey? <laughs> Just get you started in the right way today. Today we're going to be working on an ironware uh, pitcher with white flowers uh, and it's white on white. We're going to be exploring all kinds of stuff when we do this today. So where are we going to start? In the shadows because uh, you know on a white, on a white you know, entirely white, almost monochromatic piece. The shadows are wh what are going to make every all the form come to life and all the excitement's going to be happening in the shadows. So first we'll start with the leaves, hit the shadows, and the white is just going to sing. So first of all, I'm going to take some sap green and a little bit of phthalo turquoise. And that's going to be my darkest dark. And I'm going to mix the three greens first. Because once I start hitting the canvas, it, it, I'm going to be all over the place and I want to make sure that I have these colors down. So I'll make a big enough pile for a good dark. That's good for that dark. I wanted to cool that green down just a little bit. And now I'll add a little white. Get a mid-tone green going here. That's pretty. Up is good. Might need to be a little darker. Oh, I'm just going to go straight up there and get it dirty right from the beginning. Okay, that's good. That's a little darker. And I'm going to leave just a little bit on my, my knife before I wipe it off and add a bunch of white and a little, just a little bit of this cad yellow deep to warm it up. That'll be my light green. Doesn't look very green to me. <laughs> I'm going to steal some from over here. There you go. Now we've got three nice little piles here. Great way to start. Okay, so you look at this still life with white flowers and a white pitcher and bowl and a white sheet, a white golf ball, and a white tee. And uh, is it, what, what possessed me to paint this? There's no red, <laughs> there's no flash of color, but I see a ton of color in the white, and that's what I would like to show you today. So where am I going to start? Let's, let's get these darks and the leaves just, just uh, roughed out so that things will start to, you know, it's like a map, so that things will start to make sense. So what am I going to do? I'm going to throw some branches out here, some stems. They're not branches, they're stems. Whatever, close enough. So that I have a map of where I'm going. We've got some here, and I'm just going to start putting in the darks. Where do I see a dark shape? That's, that's light here. This is dark. Just blobs of dark. I'm going to stick with one color the whole time and uh, put them down and then and systematically put in the darks, the mediums, and the lights. Okay, let's see. This has a little blob right in the middle of this shape here for this leaf. And I'm just going to start connecting these. 
Somebody said, well, why did you add a golf ball into the, into the still life? Well, because I liked it. <laughs> why would you paint anything? Really, um, no, there, there are logical reasons why you would put something in a, in a composition to help move the interest up a certain way. But I really just loved the golf ball and thought it needed to be there. Um, basically, what I did was I emptied out my pockets, and what was in my pockets at the end of the day were my car keys, a golf ball, a tee, and, um, and I thought, wow, that'd, that'd be good in the painting. So that's, that's pretty much how that happened. And you know when you've been golfing a lot, when in every room of your house and everywhere you go, there's always tees everywhere. I mean, there's tees in my dresser, there's tees in the kitchen, there's tees in the studio. You know golf's kind of taken over. I had to paint with tees. I think I'm going to try that. Instead of using a palette knife, just see, see what happens. Okay, so we've got leaves here, some dark there. We've got this reach way up here. Get this one. Just trying to keep my place here because, you know, I lose it. See, I just, just loosely putting these shapes in. And in a minute, well, or two or three, they'll start popping. Not going to be fussy with this at all today. In fact, I see more dark, medium, light. I'm not even going to put that in because I want to get the canvas pretty much covered tonight, which would be a, a miracle. But I'm all for miracles today. Okay, where else do I see some dark? What is this thing doing? There's some dark there. I'm just loosely putting these strokes down and I'm not blending away my personality. When I first started painting, I made everything perfect and you couldn't, you, you couldn't, well, no. When I first started painting, it wasn't perfect at all. <laughs> it, it looked pretty messy, but, but I strove to be very realistic and, and, and get things to that point. But now, now I'm allowing my personality to show through. And I'm realizing that, that by allowing my personality come out, that is perfect. It's, it's better to be authentic. OK. There's more dark up here, a little bit here. What's going on over here? There's a little bit of green right here. Let's see what's going on under these. A little bit of dark there, 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 there. What's going on? Oh, there's a whole bunch of green over here. And I may just switch over. We've got this flower, this flower, and i just making sure I don't lose my place. There, that's good. Good enough for me. Let's see if there's anything else going on. Nope, we'll go for a lighter green. I'm going to use my paper towel to wipe the same brush. And I'm going to overstate the, uh, the light because it'll get blended away. So I'm taking my dirty brush, go into the light, go to the light. I'm going to put that down and then, and then when I start blending, it won't be lost. Okay, so I'm just really loose shapes. Light here. Where else do I see that? I'm using a lot of medium, too. Got a lot of energy today and want that to be in the painting. OK, this is light. That's light. Where's some light on this leaf? That's good. OK, there's light on this side of the leaf. This is more of a mid-tone, so I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. Going all over this canvas with the light. Some on either side of that. Some on this side of this. We're just going to keep moving over. Whoops, I found a dark. And I didn't want to clean my brush, so I'm going to put some light down. 
grab the dart, go straight into it. There we go. This is a no fuss painting day. I golfed with this woman and she was great. She just kept saying, and I loved her attitude. She's like, just hit it and go, hit it and go. So she never dwelled on how bad her last hit was. She was always ready for the next one. And it's the same thing, just hit the canvas and go today. Okay, a little bit darker here, a little lighter there. Ooh, it needs a whole bunch of light right at the top here. That's all I'm going to do there. Let's see, we've got some little bit of leaf growing right over the top of that. And it's going to need to be anchored a little, so I'll just throw a little tip of dark on the edge there. We are getting loose over here today. I know, you're saying, where's the red? It's too early for that yet, though. A little bit more green. Okay, I've not played around with the medium at all, so I'm going to wipe my brush off and fill in some of the medium shapes. There we go. There's that one. This one comes out like this. What's this doing? That's a little darker, so I'll leave that alone. That's part of the flower. This right here is medium. Same thing, fill in these little gaps. Very interesting shapes. What I want from this first statement, and by first statement I mean the first time I approach the canvas, is just the energy of a great start, the promise of a really lively painting. I think this could use some more dark in here, so I'm going to wipe my brush off again, go back into the dark, and re-examine where I am. I'm not going to fuss with it. I've got to put it down and leave it. Hit it and go. That's the mantra for today. A little bit of dark right up here. And is this part of the leaf? Yep, it is. A little variation. Needs a little dark over. I think I think I, I should have kept my my uh, brush clean, but no, I didn't feel like it. All right, we got a little curly cues going on there. All right, we got this. It's just part of the flower. I'll leave that alone. Really, I will. And now I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't watch my show too much, but when I do, it's real easy to see, like, dang, how could you, you know, clear as day, how could you not see that coming? But, um, but you don't when you're on top of it, and that's why you get back from your painting. Okay, we're almost there. Dark under there. Need a little more light on this side. And a little more light going right up here. I'm not exactly sure what's happening there. I'm just going to leave that alone. That's enough. That's enough green for now. Okay. Now for the roses, these are going to be the fastest things you ever saw. It's, I'm not going to go into form. I'm not going to, we're going to spend most of the time on the bottom section today. So I'm going to do three, a dark, medium, and light, and just do the real basic shapes that I see. I'm not, I'm not going for each petal. So I'm going to put, block those in, but it'll still give you a sense of what's going on or still get a sense of form. So I've got, I'm going to move this green over so that I have time to mix or place to mix. Because it's just in the way. I 
All right, so what do I want to do with these, uh, these shapes? I'm going to make a nice violet. I'll add some, right, I'm going right over the top of the green, which is going to pick up some of the green that's there, which is great. It'll be harmonious, and it'll be a nice neutral. I'm going to add some purple to that. I decided everything would have this purple slant in the shadow, so that's why I picked that. You can go whatever direction you want. Okay, I want to cool that down a little. Just, or do I? Maybe not. Maybe not. I'm going to put some of this down and see if I like it. I kind of like this dirty mauve, purple, whatever it's coming out to be, color. All right. So I'm searching for the perfect brush, looking for something that's a lot bigger than the brush I had before. I started off with a tiny brush, and that was great for these leaf shapes. Look how big this, this brush is. That shows you just how fast I'm going to block these things in. I am um, going to do kamikaze wild roses here in just a second. Okay, so let's start with the darks, which is actually, look how light this is in value on the palette. Uh, this violet is really a lot lighter than any of these greens, but it's going to be the mid-tone, maybe I need to add a little blue to that, going to be the mid, the mid gray tone here in the middle of the flowers. So I'm going to put this down and see if it works. I like the color. I just want to, I'm just not sure it's going to work. Oh, it's perfect. God, you guys, it's so cool when that happens because you know what? Sometimes you, you just don't know and, and you mix it, and, and especially when you're in front of people, but oh, it's awesome when it works out. Okay, I like that. Can you tell I like that color? All right, cool. So that's a nice little blob there. Perfect. That's the middle of that rose. All right. Um, we are not babbling here tonight. There's, let's see. So I'm going to go around and systematically, there is some method to my madness, and put in this, these darker shapes here. Goes like that. Let's see. Kind of goes like that. And you know, there's definitely a rhythm behind this. And I have songs in my head when I'm painting. And um, it definitely affects how the work goes. And believe it or not, we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about Dean Martin before I started today. So that's definitely I got Dean in my head. That's a happy thing. Okay, so I add a little blue to that. I'm gonna add a little more violet because I want to break this up a little bit. Okay, so let's see where else do I see some dark there. That's good enough. That looks good. A little bit of dark on this side. And I'm going to break this up a little, grab some of this more violet color. I'm not touching the green. People say, well, how do you keep the, the paint clean? Well, on a first statement, it's easy. You don't touch each other. It's kind of like kids who don't want <laughs> food on their plate touching, you know. Keep them separate, keeps them happy, and that, uh, that's, how this, that's how this painting works. Once it dries, then if you want to commingle and, and blend, that's great. But, so, but if you know that you're going to go back into it again, you might as well just let them be separate from the beginning and wait till they dry before you, you add something else in there. It's just easier that way. Then again, if you love messes, go for it. Touch each other. Okay, so I'm going to put more violet here, and I'm going to vary it a little. I think I'm going to grab some straight white so that I don't contaminate my pile here, and add a little bit of light there, because I don't want the same thing everywhere. And just with a dirty brush, you're seeing a lot of brush mixing today, more than on the palette. And you know what, it'd just be pretty if I could grab a little bit of this blue, just because I saw that. I saw that out of the corner of my eye when I was uh, getting ready. And when you look at the reference photo, there's a little bit of blue right there. And see, that's the thing. You, you know, 
you see something and, and it's like, then, then it's like an equalizer. Just turn it up just a little bit and, um, and it'll sing for you. Might not always like what it's singing, but it'll sing. Okay, that's good. Let's see, where else is there some dark? Right there. That's more of a real light, so I'm gonna, and I'm not using a lot of medium. You can see the, the brush strokes are thick, they're just hanging there. This is a very more direct way of painting. All right, let's see. We gotta get this stuff down. So this has a little more pink in it, so I'm gonna go, I'm tempted to just stick my brush right into this pink, but that, that would contaminate it, so I need to move it over a little. Just add a little bit here so that I can grab it and not hurt anything. There. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. Okay, so it's, that's starting to, even with just the, the white in the background, you're starting to get a sense that there are some flowers and that, that it's that kind of shape going on here. All right, so I'm gonna move over to this. Let's see, where's the darks here? You know, normally, you can, you can adjust the canvas up and down so that you can reach better. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm trying to stay loose the whole painting session today. All right, there's just a blob there. A little bit of dark hair. I don't know what's going on there. But I think I need to change it. All right, so we've got dark hair. We can just add a little blob of flower there. That's good. Okay, well, it's got to connect. So I see what I'm missing. I'm going to grab the brush that's got some green on it, just throw it down. Except there's no paint on it, <laughs> so it didn't work. Oh, I'll grab some more paint. I cleaned that brush too good. Okay, well, that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna fill in some of the light on the flowers and keep moving because this base will take a bit of time. All right, so they're not, they're, they're pretty warm over the top, the lighter parts. So I'm gonna grab some of this white, a little bit of cad yellow deep, like that. And it's harmonious with this violet, so that'll pop. I'm gonna need a lot more than that. And you know what, maybe just a little Indian yellow because I wanna turn it up. That's nice. Uh, that's a good, good amount to get started. Okay, I'm looking for another similar brush that's good. These are bristle brushes. They're going to hold the paint better, and you need bristles are good for when you're not using tons of medium. You know what? I don't think that's enough orange. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I've got some light hair. I love how these strokes are just sitting here. There. All right, so where's the other real light part? Right here. By doing this, it helps you see where you missed some of the other tones. 
and it's down right here. That's good. And there's some light right on this side. As we get down lower, there's less bright light. So I'll change my mix a little bit down there. Okay, we've got light hair. I'll throw in a little hair just because it's fun. And I think I'll probably get rid of that uh, stem. It goes a little too far for me. Yeah. We'll play with that later. I, I could sit there and fudge with that all day. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, mix it just with a little bit of this violet. There. So it's toned down just a little bit. Do I want to add a little... No, I was going to add a little bit of blue to that, but I think that might be too much. I got to try it. I got to try it because I'm just in the mood. Cool. Got lucky again. It's like a good day at golf. I got to tell you, speaking of golf. Okay, so I'm playing in this tournament. And I'm playing with three guys, and I'm and um, they're saying they don't know me, and they're like, "Oh dear, you know, just get it close to the pin, you know, just get it close." And I'm thinking, like hell, <laughs> I want to get it in the hole. And I mean, I mean, if you think about it, why why settle for a second bust? So um, the really cool thing is, is that they had this closest to the pin contest on that hole and um, and I got it I mean I got it right on the green it was just so awesome and that totally relates to painting why settle for something second best I was thinking well maybe I'm a little chicken to put that blue in there ah go for it because if you shoot high like that you're gonna get a hole in one and if you just try to get close well you're not gonna get anywhere so it really does relate to golf I know, I think I'm over the top. I am over the top. Oh, that blue is gorgeous. I love that blue. It's weird, certain colors remind me of people and that this little aqua reminds me of my grandmother. Hi, Grandma. Totally reminds me of her. Wow. Amazing how that happens. Okay. So now I think I need a little more pink because, you know, the blue is nice, but not everywhere. Ooh, maybe just one little spot. Okay. So maybe add a little pink to that. She did like her pastels. That's probably what I'm seeing. Okay. These are very rough little roses. That's the other thing. This still life, the, the flowers were ready to be thrown out because the, you know I, I waited too long to take a picture but I thought you know what that's okay they give me the basic shape and I can paint the scene the way I want it to it's like painting your life the way you want it to okay it might have been a little bit lighter would have worked for that so that's all right we'll just do that on the next time you know if you wait for things to be perfect it's just not going to happen. And if you realize that right now is perfect anyway, let me give you a good example of this. You know, I first started doing the show. Um, there was a gal that took the orientation class with me, and she was ready to do the TV show, and, and she was all excited, and, and then I didn't see her again. And then a year later, I run into her, and, um, and I had done a whole, you know, a whole year's worth of work, and she hadn't started yet. And, she, and she's like, wow. I said, you know what? I wasn't perfect. I wasn't the right weight. I wasn't. I didn't have the best experience. I didn't know what I was doing. But if you just do it, um, you build that experience. So, so don't wait to start painting. Go for it. You can do it. And um, a year from now, you're going to be going, wow, that was cool. Okay, we got enough wild little. Flower shapes going on here. What's going on here? I think this needs a little more pink. 
That's good. All right, that's a good that's a good base. So you get a good idea that there are going to be flowers here. That that's what's going on. Um, I might stick something right in the center of a couple of these, just to really um, no more than three strokes, and then I'm moving on to this part of the canvas because that's that's going to take quite a bit of time. But I might as well use my dirty brush. Go straight into this violet with a little bit of blue because when you're this far into the show, I forget to mix. That's basically what happens. Okay, so I put a little dark there. There, that's enough for that one. One here. That's enough for that. And you'll notice there's less on my brush as I move down, so it automatically varies what's going on here, so it's not boring. Cool. Okay, need to leave those alone and attack the rest of the canvas. I'm going to grab, I'm going to put this real bright light right here because that's going to make the rest of this just appear brighter. It will make everything stand out, so I'm going to get my my Rodney Dangerfield of the yellows and grab this Cad Yellow Deep. I'm talking Caddyshack references again. Oh yeah, that's great. More. I need more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now that's yellow. I'm going to grab a bunch of medium and attack the canvas. Right here, it is just bright. Woo! Okay, so how do you, you know, what we were talking about earlier, how do you keep this from hurting anything else? Maybe a little red in there because, you know, it's been halfway through the show. We have no red. You, you don't touch anything else and you'll be fine. <laughs> Love the energy when you start painting like this. Okay, so there's that's enough for that. And what is the other side? It's a it's a warm but not not as bright as that. I did pick up a little green there. You're just like, oh well, just keep going. All right, let's see. There's some uh, pink going on the other side. I'm looking at my reference photo here. Just a little bit of pink over here. Throw that in. And if it's a little too much, tone it down. Okay. Then what am I going to do about the other side? I'm going to tone this down a little bit. It's still kind of warm, but it is not as bright. So I'm going to take some violet, which is opposite on the color wheel, and tone it down. I'll even get it into that green a little bit. And we'll fill in those little gaps. And I'm going to hold it next to what's already there. Kind of reminds me of... Uh, now that's interesting. Um, okay, you ever get halfway in the middle of something and realize you want to change directions? <laughs> Can't do it right now. So l let me let me tell you what the thought process here, because there really is some logic here. I'm looking at the the flower sink, and they're a lot warmer. Um, I have one. I have two reference photos that I'm looking at over here. One's really warm, so the flowers look really warm. And that's probably what you're seeing on TV. And the other one um, is a little cooler, so the flowers look a lot cooler. Well, that, that affects how you're going to do the background. So in the reference photo that's on TV, the flowers look really warm and the, and the background looks really cool. Um, 
That's not how I painted them. So in order to be consistent, I'm going to have to do a different thing with the background. So what does that mean? You know, what am I babbling about here? I'm actually going to keep, I'm going to have it more backlit. And so I will just keep this, uh, this mellow color in the background, and that's, that's how there'll be some separation. Because if I do them the same color as the flowers, they're not going to show up. But see now, this is not as bright as the other side, and that's on purpose. Because there's more light coming in over there. OK, that's, you get the idea. Hopefully you get the idea. OK, and what's on the other side of that? One more. A little more of this, and we need to start working on the pitcher in the bowl. OK, well, one of my favorite things to do is, is create form. And that's what we're going to do on this pitcher, is make it look three-dimensional, make it look round. So how do we do that? It's definitely a, a light in the middle here, and then darker on the, on the sides. I'm going to add a little bit of this blue that I love so well, this thalo turquoise, to this mix. Quote, OK, that was the Rodney Dangerfield of blues. It took over. So I'm going to have to tone it down a little bit and see how I like it. Whoa, I'm flinging paint everywhere. OK, do I like it? No, it's too pastel -y. It's too sweet. I'm going to tone it down with a little bit of violet. You know what it needs? It needs some red. There. That's better. <laughs> I just flicked my whole pile of paint on the floor. Um, they're going to love me here. We'll, we'll have to mix some more. See, and I do that at home, and then I step in it and don't realize it till it's all over the place. OK, that's nice. That's nice, but it's too close to what's already there. So I'm going to add some blue. There. I don't want it to be the same color as the flowers. All right, so we've got dark under the. Uh, Oh, that's gorgeous. Love that color. It's going to be fast again. Just looking for the shadow, because it's the shadow that makes the light pop. If everything's in light, nobody's the star. OK, that's dark. I'm going to add a little bit of blue just because I want to, right in the middle here. I see it'll be a little bit darker there. I also see it being a little bit lighter and a little more violet, so I'm going straight into that pink to bring out that violet right here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and I see my grandmother's blue here, so we'll, we'll throw that in there. This is my Italian grandmother's blue, which is different than my Scots-Irish grandmother. She had a different kind of blue. I'll show you that later. OK, a little bit dark just around the edges. So we're just making, we're going around this form here. The bottom half is lower. It's a little bit rusty down at the bottom. This, I've had this picture forever. And uh, so, you know, I love the rust because there's red in it. So I'm going to grab some of that, put that in. It's going to help add to the form, too. And I'm going to throw a little bit of that green that was there. That'll help tone that down. Believe it or not, I'm toning down the red. Okay. 
So I see that it's a little bit lighter over on this side here. I'm going to grab my dirty brush. So everything's very brush mixed today. Could be even lighter, I think. So I'm going to grab a different brush. I'm going to need to put some more white paint out, too. I'll just throw it over the top of this stuff. There we go. So it's, it's working because it's already a fairly dirty brush. And I'm going to blend this in here. That's nice. Yeah, let's see where else. It's not totally white, it's just lighter over here. And then I can get that other brush that I was using. Fill this in. Cool. All right, so now I need to do the light over here. And this was a pink light. So I'm going to grab some of that pink. Go straight into this light so it's nice salmon color. A little bit of light here. I kind of missed some of that. Whoops. Oh well. That works. And is there any more pink here? Well, maybe just a little, even though I don't see it. Sometimes you just got to make things up. There. Now I'm going to start blending this together. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going right into the red, so those spots are going to disappear. And I'd have to reinstate them later. So I, I'm just going to blend right over the top of them. A little bit of light down below. There we go. Get a clean brush with some more light and fill in those gaps. What's going to happen is it's going to start blending with the color that's already there. All right, so we need to get this, whoops. <laughs> I'm dropping brushes, I'm, everything's flying everywhere today. Probably got paint up my nose too. That's <laughs> how so you can tell. It's a good painting session. It's just everywhere. You don't. You're just out of body. Okay. Um, it's starting starting to take on some form. There were some really cool shadows that I that I just painted over because you know what? When you're starting, the first thing I didn't want to have to be that careful. It just made me tired. So so we're gonna get the form first and put the shadows over the top. And we may not even get to that part today. So I'm going to take a clean brush and do some blending. So you, when you're blending like this, you take a clean brush, paper towel, blend, wipe, blend. Oh, that's pretty. You stand back and look to see if it's starting to work. It is. Okay, so really big things pop. A little bit of the blue, a little more violet. Got to have the dark on that one side. So if I have too much paint on my brush, okay. There we go. And I'm going to scribble this in. Based on the amount of time we have left in the show. Now, I, you saw I picked up some green, but that's okay. Okay, that's great. I love that, uh, I love that start. Now we need to throw in some
color to make this bowl look like it's doing what it's doing. So what I, it's about time we got some red. So I'm going to grab some straight perlin scarlet and mix it in with the green. Uh, let's just brush, throw in this handle real quick. Oops, I need a little more medium. And I know it looks black in the reference photo or dark blue, but you got to have some red here somewhere. So this is going to be red here too. Oh, love that. God, that's just happy. See, it just, it just didn't want to be black. Isn't it fun how just one brush stroke makes things start to make sense? I love that. You know, turning points are wonderful. Okay, so it's a little dark in here. Let's see, is this... Okay, that's enough of that. Now we're going to start to do the same thing inside the, the bowl. So that you can so that you can figure out the shape, and I'm going to do it quickly. So we got light in here, light there, light there, light around the rim right here, and again on this side, a little bit of shadow there. I'm going to do the light first, which is kind of the opposite. That's okay. I'm backwards sometimes. All right, there's some light here, here. And the rest, ooh, there's a nice little leaf right in here. So instead of getting real crazy with uh, a leaf shape, I'm just throwing in some green. There. That's all we need to know about that. Don't need to babble in this painting. There's some light hair. And does that go all the way down? It does, doesn't it? Well then, we'll change this little, change the shape of the drawing. All right, so what's going on in here? Well, it's kind of a little, little shape there and we'll start putting in these sides so that it makes sense. Okay. It's going to have to be a little bit lighter on that side. Let's get these edges going. Where are, there, where are there some shadows on the rim? I'm holding this other paintbrush in my hand for a couple reasons. One for balance. One because I might use it. That was number two. Number three, I forgot it was there. <laughs> yep. I get questions like that. Why are you holding the paintbrush? Well, there are some logical reasons, but you know, really, when it all boils down to it, is I just forgot it was there. Okay, so there's some dark right in here. And you just put a little bit of light right there, and a little bit of dark. You know, I mean, just looking at these shapes, what, what, what is the shape doing? What's it telling you down here? Needs to be a little lighter. Oh, I need some more variation in here. There we go. Maybe that was a little too much. Grandma's taking over. She was kind of like that anyway. Okay. I think there was a little extra light in there that I just wiped out. So I'll put that in. 
And what do we want to do down, you know, where there's no way we're going to get to the bottom part of this, so I want to make sure that this thing starts to take on form. So this side's going to be darker. Look, I'm running out of white here. Need a little more violet. I'm, I'm doing a lot of pinks these days. I don't know what's up with that. Throw a little blue on this side. And then this whole other side is light, but you know what? I need some more white again. Take the white, start over at this edge, pull it over. A little bit on this side because it's got some reflected light. And I also missed a little bit, some little key white points here, so I'll throw that in. Okay, now it needs to be anchored with a little, little shadow down below, so I'll take this and a little bit of violet. I want it to be a little bit warmer. There, at least it's not floating anymore. Oh, the poor golf ball is going to have to wait for another time. But I'm going to step back and take a look at it. Okay, so here we go. We've got this floating, <laughs> floating bowl of flowers, which is kind of cool. Um, it's it's just it's just hanging there in space. But you know, it's amazing that you can get you know for you've seen that I'm throwing down blobs of paint, and we're just really pushing, getting it done. And you can start to see what it looks like without putting in a lot of detail. So I'm excited about that. Okay, let's see if we can throw in this golf ball. No, I'm not going to paint the brand on it. But I will say I love Pro V's. I don't think I can get in trouble for that. How can you get in trouble about talking about something you love? Okay, there's a the golf ball. And we got a huge little shadow down there, so I could I can wipe that in real quick. I don't want it to be the same color as the I'm gonna add some orange and red and don't want it to be the same color as the bowl. Boring. A little more orange. Warm it up a little. Okay, it's not floating anymore, right? And where else is this shadow going? Throw in some more. We'll just throw in some more of the shadow stuff. To keep this thing from floating. Except I lost my little shape here. Going to have to draw that in. Because now it's, it's turned into a blob. So we'll just we'll just make some little separation here. That's okay. It's all doable. There. Now you know where one thing starts and the other one stops. That's important. Need to have boundaries here. These are just great little shadow shapes. I really like the shadow shapes. That was that was part of what just really looked like fun to me. Okay, so there's shadow on the other side of this golf ball. And of course, and you know what? I didn't think I'd ever use colored golf balls, but I had so much trouble finding my balls the other day. <laughs> I think I'm going to start using some colored golf balls. And they even have some that, that when you hit them on impact, they light up. They're pretty cool. Be great for night golfing. Throwing out this shadow. I think these shadows are just really interesting. Okay, there's one here, one there. 
Another one over here. Oh god, I didn't even do the handle. Wow. Okay, we'll throw that in. There's a there's a handle. See, it doesn't have to be complicated. Don't have to make it hard. And I definitely need to just put a little bit of white on this golf ball and make it happy. Got to leave it alone for now. Okay, so I'm going to step back and take a look at it and say, okay, what's going on? This is a great start for a painting. Um, it's got all the elements, so it, it's, it's the perfect road map. You know where to go. You have a sense of form. You can tell that uh, this is three-dimensional. You can see the inside of the bowl. You know you've got a map for where all the petals of the flowers go. So you've, you've got the basic shapes down, and from here, then you can start refining and adding details or not, depending on, on how detailed you want it to be. Um, what would I do different, and what am I going to do different? Well, before I leave, if, if I'm going to go back into a painting, uh, what I do is I'll scrape off the hard, the hard edges so that there's no evidence of where I was, and that way if I want to change something, it's, easy, it's an easy fix. So it doesn't... So you, you still have the shapes, but you don't have these hard bumps. So you're not painting over that. So I'd scrape off that. And what I think I'll do differently, though, is I really like, you know, part of the thing is I really like the reference photo. So I'm going to change these. I'm going to make these warmer and make the background cooler because I really like the warmth in the flowers. That was part of what excited me about the whole thing. Um, but even with these changes, Am I disappointed? No. I think it's a great start. So the point of the whole the whole point of today is things don't have to be perfect. Just get in there and do it. You're gonna have fun. Thanks for watching. Give your wall some soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.